Tax day is April 17th, and if you're a procrastinator, you might be in luck this morning because right now we have some help in the house. Joining us is financial strategist Marquita Miller. First off, Marquita, we want to ask you about three things that will shock people okay. that you can deduct. One being a swimming pool. Okay, so swimming pool, think about it. There's a couple of places that you can deduct that. So let's say if it's a medical necessary, that you've got arthritis, it's some connection with that. If your doctor will put that you need to go to water aerobics, you need to have a pool, that is something that could fall under the medical. But let's talk about this from a standpoint of a business deduction. Uh -huh. You are a swimming pool instructor. You start a swimming business. Why wouldn't you be able to deduct your pool? Well, true. See, it all comes down to how you use it. Now, for someone who's just wants a pool in their backyard yeah. and, and they're not in business, it's not medical, ah, it's not going to work. But if you have a business, and I'm all about that entrepreneurship, yeah. and that's your business line, then that deduction would stand as a business deduction. And if it's not a business deduction, you have to have a doctor's note saying, this is why I Ab recommended my patient. Absolutely. And I do have clients that have gotten yeah. their gym memberships to be able to be deducted yeah. and off their taxes as medical because they needed that for medical reasons. Clarinets and other musical instruments. Once again, I'm going to go right back to my entrepreneurship lovers. For those individuals who are in the music business or yeah. in the, um, from that standpoint, the entertainment or even music instructors, they've got to have those instruments, right? Yeah. They've got to perfect their skill. That's tax deductible. That's what they use. And I have people that are professional in orchestras. They've got they to have do. their instruments. That's part of what they do. There are people who have, I, I, I heard that if you have a speech impediment and your doctor has recommended you play a reed instrument, if like a, a flute or something like that, to you help can with deduct that. that. If the doctor has recommended and it's on a prescription, you can get that documented, then that is going to last and that's going to hold up. Breast implants. Okay. How so do you deduct those? If you have to be in the industry that, mm -hmm. um, that enhances your ability in your job. So let's say if you are a professional exotic dancer, um, a performer, or maybe even a model. If that's something that is in your industry that helps you to do your job. Um, I had a client that actually was in an audit and their co they were able to pass their audit. They were at, worked at a bar and this, it passed, their expense for that passed because in their contract it was stated that enhancements help their performance on their job and the revenue. So, and that was in her contract? That was in her contract. Interesting. It's all about your business, the line of business. What works for one person doesn't automatically work for the next because you have to know what are the differences, what's sure. the line of business and those kind of things. Tell me about volunteer work and how you quantify, if you volunteer five hours a week, how do you quantify that in a deduction? Okay, so you're not, so let's, it's two, two roads that we can travel with the volunteer. So let's say, for example, that you volunteer to, um, your comp you have a computer business and you volunteer to do computer training. Mm -hmm. Because that's your business, you're going to be able to deduct that deduction, the, uh, the labor and your service, because that's what you do in the business. But let's say for someone else that I just go to the Salvation Army to, to volunteer because out of my heart. Well, the mileage, I'm not going to be able to deduct my time because that's not part of my profession, but the miles that I go to, to give that is going to be a deduction as charitable contributions. Also, if I make, of course, any kind of charitable contribution sure. deduction, deduct that's going to be deductible. <clears throat> state sales tax, also that's deductible? A, that is state and local sales tax are deductible. And that's something that's changing next year. It's going to be a $10,000 cap. So this is the last year where there's not a cap on that for state and uh, local taxes. You also say it's possible to deduct a college credit for people who are long out of college, like how far out of college? So let's say, for example, they're going, let's say you, you've um, already gotten your degree, but you're going back to college to improve improve your skill set. Maybe you want to take public speaking. You can write those courses off if as long as it connects to your job, your business, something that enhances. Now, if you are in school currently, um, then you're able to get the education deduction. But there are people, but it has to be accredited school and you need to get the 1098T form. But if you're going back just to take classes so that you can improve what you do for your job, for your business, then that's a write-off for Would you. that count for learning a second language? Absolutely. It's that's, so important. It's so important, especially now. That's a, that's a deduction that would be easy because mm -hmm. in most jobs, being bilingual is something that people are wanting, so that could also be something. Moving expenses. Moving expenses. So it has to be related. There's two tests for that. There's time and distance. So the time, if you're a full-time worker, then for the next, uh, you have to work 39 weeks after you have the moving expense okay. to prove that you met the time. Now the distance is the thing that gets people. You have to, the move has to be closely related to your job. So if your new, if you, where you move to is put you closer to your job uh, by 50 miles, 
you, you've shortened that distance, then that's going to be great. But a lot of people end up moving. I've got a lot of clients that I've seen, and they move further from their job, and they oh, want to deduct you it. can't deduct that. It will not work. It has to move you. It's got to be closely related to moving for your business. Accountant your and job. business strategist Marquita Miller with your last-minute tax tips and little-known deductions. Thank you. Thank you.